As video game enthusiasts, when we think of our favourite developers, we immediately think of games made by them. Usually, these titles are among our favourite games, take my own taste as an example. Regarding Falcom, I think of the Trails series, specifically Azure and Reverie. When it comes to Nintendo, I think of the 3D Mario games. When it comes to Idea Factory, I think of the many Otomi games I've played from them over the years. And most relevant to this video, when it comes to Atlas, I think of Persona 4 Golden. However, just because these are the first games I think of, this doesn't mean I played these titles first. For example, the first Act Plus game I played wasn't White Album 2, it was actually Dungeon Travelers 2 on the PlayStation Vita. Likewise, while I love Persona 4 Golden, it wasn't my first Atlas game. In fact, it was my second. The first Atlas game I ever played is the subject of today's video, Etronacy Untold The Millennium Girl. Last year I did a retrospective of Etronacy 3, which is still my best performing retrospective video, and understandably, y'all want me to cover more Etronacy games, so after just over a year, I'm finally getting around to it. So, what better pace than to start at the beginning? It's time to talk about Etron Odyssey Untold. My first exposure to Etron Odyssey Untold was in the November 2013 European Nintendo Direct, when former Nintendo of Europe president Satoru Shibata announced the European release of the title. I was immediately fascinated by the trailer on show. I wasn't aware of Atlas's other titles back then aside from one or two magazine reviews, most notably an official Nintendo Magazine UK import review for Devil Survivor Overclocked back in 2011. I wasn't aware of how frustrated European Atlas fans were and Atlas's European attitudes towards the power region back then, Atlas would usually license their games to a third party European publisher for release months after the official US localization, if at all. In the case of Etronacy Untold, Atlas and NIS America already announced a European release was coming following Untold's North American release months earlier, with no news since. I also wasn't aware of the multitude of third party titles Atlas USA localized either, or all of that related heritage. All I saw was an interesting looking game with badass music and a compelling story and gameplay, so of course I went and pre-ordered the game. Back in May 2014, when the game finally saw its European release, I was still all about the 3DS. It had become my main console even before I got a Wii U to play Mario Kart 8 on day one. Yep, that game is also 10 years old this year. Does anyone else feel old yet? When I played Untold, I remember being instantly hooked. The atmosphere and music immediately sucked me in, the 3D effect combined with the cartography gameplay on the bottom screen immediately engrossed me. It was original, it was unique, I'd never played anything like this before. I also remember liking the characters Untold introduced, alongside the high quality English voice acting. The turn based battle system was also my jam, I spent hours at a time playing this game. I also remember not finishing it, I got to the end of the fourth stratum and just stopped, presumably because I was burned out after trying to play it for so long and then I just never went back to it. That was partly because I got a Vita not long after, with most of my gaming time moving towards that for the foreseeable future, including the likes of Persona 4 Golden. It was only when I fully embraced going back to the 3DS to catch up on what I missed years later. I finished the story mode. I also found out that some fans consider the story modes in both Untold games somewhat divisive. Now I'm a content creator online, with the means to record 3DS gameplay, as well as a broader understanding of video games and JRPGs compared to back then, I'm going to cast aside my nostalgia as best as I can and talk about Untold Story Mode and gameplay. Is this game truly as good as I remember, or are fans right and the story really does suck? Now for this video, I'm going to focus primarily on the story mode, however I will also touch on the new and noteworthy gameplay enhancements introduced in Etrion Odyssey Untold. I'm not diving into the core gameplay of Etrion too much, as I've already done that extensively in other videos. However, I will touch on it now because there are some key differences between Untold and the original game. Etrion Odyssey Untold is a first person dungeon RPG inspired by wizardry. You walk around the labyrinths and map them on the bottom of your stylus, combining cartography with turn-based RPG battles. On the field, there are FOEs, which are foes you shouldn't try to fight the first time around as they are simply too strong. You will then have to find creative ways around them, making each Etronacy dungeon a puzzle. This avoids the many obnoxious mazes and traps like in other games, because Etronacy limits this stuff to the post-game. Additionally, the atmosphere in Etronacy Untold is a unique juxtaposition. On the one hand, the environment embodies Mother Nature, and it looks absolutely beautiful. On the 3DS, the 3D effect adds an extra sense of depth to each dungeon. I know many people dislike the 3D effect, which I understand, 
However, I'd go as far as to argue the Edge Runner series, not just Untold, is one of the best uses of the 3D depth in the 3DS, period. The 3D makes it easier to work out exactly where each tile is placed, so you can map the dungeon most accurately. It also made it easier to work out how far FOEs, treasure chests and more are found. It adds the depth perception of real world pen and paper RPGs. It is truly a glorious experience and I recommend playing on a 3DS XL if possible. Playing Etronacy Untold on an emulator, as I did for the purposes of this video, offers a similarly amazing experience from a presentation perspective. The tree leaves are more detailed and crisp, and the monster models are on par with what you'd expect in an official HD Master. While I prefer the 3D effect, you can't go wrong either way. One issue of playing Etronacy on an emulator though, it's quite fiddly. Often, you'd have to change screens to fully map the dungeons, as unlike the newest Etron titles, chests and shortcuts aren't automatically added. It meant I had to use automat feature to play through Untold, and I did not expect it to be so fiddly. I now somewhat regret recommending emulation as much as I did in my Where Do You Start video from last year. You can get around this using a mouse or having the screen side by side or top and bottom, especially on a portable device. If you can play this game on the original hardware, do so. Outside of mapping the labyrinths, what most people don't realise is that Untold's version of the Labyrinth is similar, but not identical, to the original Etrian Odyssey. I'm not talking about Gladsheim, I'm referring to the core 30 floors in the original Yggdrasil Labyrinth. These maps have been tweaked and reworked for the 3DS version. The core premise and execution are the same, but there are changes that mean they're not one-to-one -one conversions, so you have to use specific guides for the Untold game if you need them. Outside of maps, New features introduced in Etronacy Untold included the Picnic Story Mode setting, allowing for more accessibility, the Stair Jump feature, allowing you to jump between staircases, as well as an Automat feature. These are all things that become series staples as part of a wider strategy by Atlas to incorporate quality of life features into their titles. This began with Shin Megami Tensei 4 and has extended further to the likes of Rain Historia, Perfect Chronology and Persona 5 Tactica, which is way easier when compared to Devil Survivor or even Growlanzer. At the time, I didn't appreciate how vital these quality of life features were. Dungeon crawlers are known for their difficulty, especially the first person wizardry titles Atlas took direct inspiration from when creating the Etron series. Even when the Etron series was locked to Nintendo handhelds, accessibility in dungeon crawlers was a relatively new concept. Sure, you had the likes of Class of Heroes, another cult classic dungeon RPG series from the time that specifically aimed to make the genre more accessible. Meanwhile, Experience Inc. developed games like Demon Gaze and Stranger of Soul City, the former of which was also designed to be an entry point into the genre. There's also more erotic stuff like the Dungeon Traveler series, which isn't really accessible in terms of visuals, but is an example of how Etchy is often incorporated into first person dungeon RPGs as a quote unquote payoff for brutally hard game design. While the original Etchy and Lucy is a very hard game, Etchy Untold falls into the intermediate territory. It's definitely harder than, say, Class of Heroes, but easier than Stranger of Soul City. I managed it fine back in the day, although it took a lot of time and error. It was the immersive cartography mechanics and presentation that saw me through. For the purposes of my playthrough though, I played on the lowest difficulty. Some other unique features introduced in Untold are Grimoire Stones and the Safe House. Grimoire Stones are magical stones which allow you to equip skills and weapons outside the class of each character. An early example in Untold is where Simon, a medic, can use an axe, a weapon medics can't typically use. These gems are randomly generated in battle due to a grimoire chance. You can also obtain beast grimoires, which are skills from beasts. The problem with grimoire stones is that sometimes you generate so many of them you have to filter through a massive list of stones. Many of them even share the exact same skills and weapon equipment bonuses. There's a limited selection of skills outside of beast grimoire skills and a few other grimoires you find in a labyrinth. When you combine this with your inability for the story mode cast to change classes, it comes to a point where you just stop bothering with customization for the most part. It gets so overwhelming, and it's a shame because, at its core, Grimoire Stones are a great mechanic. This is why Atlas took feedback from fans to fix the Grimoire Stone function in Etrancy 2 Untold. As for the safe house, this is a brand new location where you can store items, use the street pass features introduced in Etrancy 4, and interact with and do missions for the various NPCs based there. The first NPC you work with at the safe house is Rosa, a housekeeper sent by the Rakuna household because Rakuna's dad is an overprotective bastard. I like Rosa, and she was a neat role. She also produces concoctions that you can use to gain stat increases whenever you drink them, which apply for your next run in the labyrinth. You may even gain a good, or bad, effect as well. Other NPCs you meet throughout the story make this house their home. Some of them are spoilers and only come into play later in the story, so I won't detail them here but I also like them as well. 
You can also name the house too. I called it Sheldon, after the name of Rakuna's family. Before I touch on Etrian Odyssey Untold's exclusive story, I want to explain the story of the original Etrian Odyssey, which you can access via Untold's classic mode. Etrian Odyssey is set in the town of Etria. This name inspired the English name of the series to begin with. Underneath Etria is a mystical, Yggdrasil labyrinth that adventurers worldwide look to explore and discover the secrets of. There are a couple of plot twists throughout the story, as well as the revelations in the last two stratums. If you know, you know. Yes, Etrian Odyssey does have series lore, mostly relating to the legends of Yggdrasil. Yes, the same Yggdrasil who brings life to the world, threatens to destroy Etria via a calamity. It won't blow your mind, but it gets the job done, it drives the story while also being very faithful to the dungeon RPG classics Etrian Odyssey took inspiration from. Etrian Odyssey Untold takes this core foundation and expands on it significantly, bringing the world of Etrian Odyssey to life in a way no game in the series has done to date. It's not the first dungeon RPG to the story. The previously mentioned Demon Gaze and Dungeon Travelers 2 also had stories which include vision novel style cutscenes. Yes, even if it contains nonsense, it's still a story. Yet, while Edge Odyssey Untold's story mode builds on the existing foundation from the original game, Untold's world building is itself a foundation for future games within the Etrian series. It's the inception of dungeon RPG world building foundations. I know this is a bit confusing, so let me contextualise this from the perspective of the cast. Let's start with the main protagonist you play, the Highlander, a new class introduced within Etrian Odyssey Untold. Highlanders come from a mysterious faraway tribe you don't know much about other than they are highly respected worldwide, including in Etria. You have to give a name to the protagonist, I took inspiration from a certain disciple of the Eight Leaves. Anyway, the chieftain of Etria sends a letter to the Highlander tribe asking for them to send somebody to investigate mysterious earthquakes happening near the city. The main character is a man dispatched to the city and then by extension Gladshine which is the mysterious ruin where the chieftain believes the earthquakes originate from. Throughout the story, the Highlander plays the role of a silent protagonist. I think this fits quite well, given dungeon RPGs typically don't have voice protagonists. Additionally, given that Atlas are very experienced with silent protagonists thanks to the Persona series, having the Highlander silent works best in my opinion, given the experimental nature of this remake. You respond to various questions and prompts by your party, FOEs and other NPCs, allow you to customise your play for a bit. It's worth noting that these choice responses do not affect the ending, giving it a good example of the illusion of choice. Next are the three investigators from the Midgard Library. All three, Rakuna, Simon and Arthur are also investigating Gladshine. All three of their backstories add to Untold's world in their own unique ways. Rakuna is a protector who's pretty laid back, loves getting pissed and is good in battle. Of the three Midgard investigators, I'd say she's my favourite, Interestingly, she also hails from Ontario, clearly a reference to the Canadian province of the same name. This implies that Etrian Odyssey is set in an alternative version of planet Earth. Next up is Simon, who is the brains of the investigation team. He can be quite blunt and dry, but does mean well. This aspect of his character is somewhat divisive because he does unintentionally cause offence at times. He's probably my least favourite of the three. With the world of Etria, he hails from an unnamed town that was destroyed in a calamity by another Yggdrasil tree similar to what threatens Etria now. The final investigator, Arthur, was saved by Simon from this very same calamity. He's the youngest and hence most immature of the group. This is a nice balance and helps build chemistry between the three person team. In terms of gameplay, he's an alchemist filling in the role of backline fence magic. The fifth member is on the game's box art, Fredrika, aka the Millennium Girl. The Highlander finds her in a mysterious pod while investigating Gladsheim at the start of the game. He inadvertently sets her free before helping fight off a monster that the Midgard Library investigators are being chased by, which is how you will meet. After the fight, the five talk, trade information and discover they share the same goals. Therefore, they decide to collaborate and investigate the labyrinth together. Additionally, Frederica has lost her memories and becomes attached to the Highlander. He did free her after all. As the story progresses, you learn more about the mysteries of Etria, and you learn more about Frederica's background and why she ended up in the pod. The story, in some ways, is quite cliché, as there are some anime tropes throughout the story, and some aspects of the story are kind of predictable, especially if you watch the opening. The most predictable range around the character arcs. The characters do grow a bit throughout the story, they are more than just their tropes and demeanour, but they do lack the complexity of other JRPGs like, say, Raid Historia and the Xenoblade series. Untold Story Mode won't win any rewards, and that's okay. 
Untold Story Mode's greatest strength is how it builds on the original Etrian Odyssey. Now I can't really fully explain this without spoiling the story for both Etrian Odyssey and Untold, so please use the timestamps to stick to the next section of this video if you don't want to hear the spoilers, where I'll give a final spoiler free summary on the story. With that warning in place, let's continue. In the original Etrian Odyssey, the big plot twist is that the fifth stratum is the fallen Shinjuku, essentially confirming that the world we know as Etria is set hundreds of years after a calamity struck modern day society, and specifically above Tokyo. Additionally, the chieftain of Etria is revealed to be a descendant of the people who went extinct a millennium ago and actively worked to prevent the party, whether in the original game or untold, from finding out the truth of the labyrinth. Therefore, Frederica's reveal as another descendant makes perfect sense. The plot twist of a forgotten high-tech civilization lost in time is not new to Atlas. Even before Etronacy's original DS release, a similar plot thread was a core part of Growlin's A Wayfair of Time, which was similarly well received when that game originally released in Japan on the PlayStation 2. Additionally, Ren and Tlachka's allyship with the Chieftain is one of the best plot twists in the entire series. Not only did these popular and respected warriors become an enemy, but you had to fight them early on in Fallen Shinjuku. While this encounter is somewhat foreshadowed, it still hits home. It hits even more in Untold Story Mode, given how much more personal the interactions are within this mode, whether it's fighting alongside the Highlander during the orientation mission, or offering healing in later stratums before the boss is there, players get to know and connect with Ren and Talachka on a level not seen in the original DS version. It really helps the world feel more alive and connects the player to the land of Etria, which also helps build up to the climax of this epic story. This touches on nicely to the ending sequence, which is mostly a series of boss fights. The first is against the Chieftain, long corrupted by Yggdrasil itself, at the bottom of Fallen Shinjuku. This is a faithful adaptation of the equivalent fight from the original game, incorporating the story mode's cast and circumstances very well. Of course, the final boss of the Yggdrasil Labyrinth, the Yggdrasil Core, is another highlight. Yuzo Koshiro composed a new battle theme for the second phase of this fight, exclusively for Untold Story Mode. This is easily among the most epic boss fights across the entire Etrian series, with the new battle theme perfectly embodying that. The best part, however, is the penultimate fight, the battle against Mike, Frederica's computerized ally in Gladsheim, now turned enemy. This fight was foreshadowed because Mike reacted negatively to Frederica rejecting Gungnir, the original proposed solution for killing the Yggdrasil Core. If Gungnir goes ahead, Etria will be destroyed in the process, much like Simon and Arthur's hometown. Because Mike is a machine, rejecting Gungnir meant rejecting his reason for existing. Hence, Mike rejected Frederica's authority. While not the most original exploration of human relations within AI, it was very well executed on its own merits and was a bit of a tearjerker at times. One reason why this is the case is also because of Mike's boss fight. Because Mike activates Gungnir unilaterally, in order to stop him, the party only has 30 turns to traverse the entire fifth floor of Gladsheim and defeat Mike before Gungnir launches. Otherwise, it's game over. This entire sequence is so unique and so epic at the same time. This is the first time that the Etrian series uses turn limits as a time indicator in such an integral manner. Misty Ravine from Etrian C4 incorporated something similar with its toxic smoke, which was one of many experimental elements within that title. However, that's nothing on the scale of how Etrian C Untold further expanded on the idea. Unlike every other floor in the game, bar the incomplete map of the first floor used for the orientation mission, players already have the whole map minus doors and FOEs. The puzzle here is how do you complete the mission within 30 turns, including defeating any FOEs that obstruct your path. This elevates the encounter with Mike from what could have been fairly meh into what feels like the true final boss, complete with another epic battle theme from Yuzo Koshiro. Once your encounter with Mike concludes alongside the fallout, only then do you find Yggdrasil Core, which feels more like tying up loose ends rather than the actual climax of the story. It's fantastic and really helps end Etronis Untold Story Mode on a high note, especially for newcomers to the genre. I do also have some other thoughts regarding the ending structure that don't lead into spoiler territory, so I'm going to come on to that now. One key thing that partially explains Untold's divisive reception relates to the sixth stratum, breaking with series tradition, which is when once you clear the fifth stratum, you have to go through the whole post-game stratum in order to defeat the true boss at the end. Actually, Untold allows you to skip the whole stratum via a shortcut that you take from the beginning. While this is good for accessibility. Etrian Odyssey post-games are known for their brutal difficulty after all, 
The game forces players to choose between either the story mode or exploring the post-game stratum before beating the true final boss. While there is a plot justification for this, and there is a choice to explore the stratum by continuing the save file over a new game plus, I still find this quite odd. While I wouldn't have minded this when I was younger, I'm not really a fan of this design choice now. I believe my change in viewpoint reflects the attitudes between players new to RPGs, like I was then, and more experienced players, like I am now. New players are less likely to tolerate the various door, warp and troll paths within the Claret Hollows, which is closer to dungeon design in the average dungeon RPG. Additionally, Claret Hollows is a lot harder and darker in comparison to all other stratums. Both of these combine into a huge tonal shift which newer players may not like. However, I'm glad newer players can skip the difficulty of the Claret Hollows if they want to, but I do believe Atlas should have given players the option to utilise the shortcut within the story mode, so you can still explore it with the core cast. Extra Odyssey Untold's legacy is surprisingly multifaceted, not just for Atlas and the series, but also for me personally. Starting with the Etrian series, the most notable example is the Untold sequel, Etrian Odyssey 2 Untold. This game came out in Japan in November 2014, before getting its North American release in August 2015. This remake of Etrian Odyssey 2 is built on the foundations of Etrian Odyssey 2 and Etrian Odyssey Untold. This is both in terms of gameplay, accessibility, but also world building. I won't detail this here because Untold 2 deserves its own full video in the future. However, there are a couple of tidbits I want to address that relate more to Untold. Atlas considered adding Frederica to Untold 2 as a dual wielding gunner. I would have loved to have seen a make return, as well as the rest of the cast, especially because the Midgard library does feature prominently in that game's story mode. As of 2024, we have yet to see any of the untold characters return. The Highlander class, however, fares better. This class became a fan favourite, returning in both H1 2 Untold's classic mode as well as in H1 Nexus with all new portraits. The Highlander tribe really went places following Untold, and I'm really glad that the class continues to live on. As for Atlas themselves, Etron Untold was one of many remakes the developer produced for the Nintendo 3DS. This helped the company grow outside of Japan, especially in Europe. Atlas's 3DS lineup is still one of the strongest third party lineups on the Nintendo handheld to date, and although it's quite pricey now, Etron Untold does remain on the cheaper end of the scale. It's a shame it's been somewhat lost to time, because Atlas chose not to remaster Etron Untold as part of the Origins collection in 2023, instead, preferring the DS original. This choice is definitely controversial, I would have preferred Untold for one, and this did make my recommendations video more difficult to make. However, that doesn't mean Atlas themselves shouldn't remaster it in the future. Series illustrator Yuji Himika himself has publicly expressed a desire to see both Untold games in HD someday, and as the franchise continues to grow, I hope it happens. After all, Etrosy Untold is a great game, the core gameplay is fantastic, the new gameplay editions are great ideas at their core, even with flawed execution. The art and music are fantastic and really help modernise Etron Odyssey for a new audience, although the original OST does exist for those who prefer it. Its greatest achievement though was improving the accessibility for the series, something that's become standard going forward. The story mode greatly helped Untold succeed in what it set out to do, both from a lore perspective and a gameplay perspective. Therefore, if you haven't checked out this gem yet, I wholeheartedly recommend playing it. Is it amazing? No, but it is both engaging and fun on its own merits. An engaging story doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to draw people in, it just has to be fun, no matter how experienced you are with RPGs. And in my case, that's exactly what it was. Etrian Odyssey Untold Story Mode was a turning point for me, because it opened the doors for other incredible experiences by Atlas, whether it's all-time classics like Persona 4 Golden, forgotten gems like Rain Historia, or their third-party titles localised by Atlas USA, Atlas became a large part of my game in life. Had I not played Untold back then, I likely wouldn't have gotten into Atlas until much later, until it became a much more popular developer thanks to Persona 5's phenomenal success worldwide. I also wouldn't have as many of their games physically, because most old Atlas titles are really expensive now. The same also applies to some of the developers and franchises they worked on in the past, one of which made my favourite vision of all time by the way. So in a roundabout way, the Labyrinth of Etria doesn't just swallow up those who dare to explore it, it swallows up the time and money of those looking to explore new gaming genres and developers, all of which have their own stories to tell. That is a story and experience that shouldn't be left untold.